Thank you all for coming for another edition of uh, Beginner Breakdown. I am your host, Mike Comer. Today, we'll be going over games that are uh, called Don't Trap Your Queen, okay? So, so don't lose your queen. A big way that you uh, lose your queen is you get it trapped, okay? It's got no place to go, all right? So remember, you want to keep your queen mobile and uh, out of harm's way. Okay, so we just, uh, the chess club just concluded uh, hosting the U.S. Junior Clothes Championship. It had 10 extraordinary uh, young men competing for a prize fund of $10,000. The winner was uh, Caden Trove. He uh, just recently got his Grandmaster title. He won $3,000, and uh, he'll get an entry into the uh, 2015 U.S. Chess Championship, also to be held at the uh, chess club. So here is his final round game, his big win against uh, local St. Louis resident, Matt Larson. Caden Trofe is playing the white pieces, okay? So he starts out D4, all right? And uh, black counters D5. The lowest percentage win of all uh, black's responses, okay? But, all right, but that doesn't mean it's bad, all right? So white brings out his knight to F3, not playing C4. So black counters with knight to f6. White plays e3. Everybody that's been watching our uh, programs the last uh, you know, two or three months knows that I am not a fan of e3. Can anybody tell me why I'm not a fan of e3? Bishop on c1. Because <laughs> yeah, you made your bishop on c1. Not very mobile, OK? But he's a grandmaster, so who's to argue with? Uh, with him okay so so all okay. right so he's like okay matt larson's thinking i'm not gonna make the same mistake that my opponents make i'm gonna get my bishop active okay and now that this pawn is on uh you know not on c4 he doesn't have to worry about queen to b3 here okay if because if white could play queen to b3 right now targeting b7 matt would be in trouble but since he brought his knight out brought his little pawn out he doesn't have to worry about it. So bishop f5. So now c4. So now he's not threatening that. He's also threatening to bring his queen to b3. So, so now black plays c6. All right, so it supports this pawn. And also, how do you think he would cover, um, how do you think black would respond to queen to b3 in this position? And I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with his last move, which was c6. Queen to c7. Queen to c7. Good. All right. Protects the pawn. And um, he still has plenty of defenders on uh, d4. OK. So now he prepares it with knight to c3. All right. So he, now he's adding another attacker onto d5. So right now he's got one, two, and he's preparing queen to b3, adding a third one through an x-ray, OK? So double prepare. Now he plays e6. And guess what? This bishop isn't uh, relegated to the back row, right? So Matt Larson, he's probably smiling right now. I got all my guys protected, and uh, life is good, OK? So you see how black? Uh, in this position, because white didn't play c4 right away, uh, was able to get his bishop free. Okay, So who do you think black's going to win in this position, <laughs> considering he did everything good? Not quite, but, but that's OK. So now white brings out his knight to attack the bishop. So do you think black really wants this to happen? No. OK. So, so he doesn't want that to happen. So you can just retreat the bishop. These double pawns is what Caden gives them. So now uh, he's got double pawns. But you see how these double pawns are better than the ones that look like, uh, that look like this? See the difference? Now. Knight takes bishop. This rook is now active. He's got play along the h-file. So if Caden, as white, ever 
castles over there, uh, he might have checkmate threats on this h file, okay? All right. So now bishop attacks this pawn, but it's protected. So he's doing all right. So he doesn't really have to worry about that too much. So now he uh, continues his development. So now castle. So as black, I'd be kind of uh, happy right now. You know, I got this H file open targeting the square here, and uh, things are going okay. So if black really wanted to threaten checkmate in this position, what would he do? Okay, so so if we move the the horse, <laughs> it doesn't actually threaten checkmate, and also it would let him get captured. Okay, but but it's an okay idea. So the idea is, wow, I want to attack h2. Unfortunately, even if even if your dreams come true, even if you take on h2, it's still not checkmate. All right, so we want to get the queen down there. All right, so where can the queen go right now, you, in the white shirt? Where can the queen go right now to a threat and checkmate? Very good, c7. All right, so that, that's an idea. But instead, he decides to play bishop to d6, all right? Threatening uh, perpetual check. Check, king there, check, king there. So he wasn't going for the win, evidently. He wanted just the uh, perpetual check. All right, so bishop to d6. So now how do you think Caden, as white, says, I'm not going to let you take h2? G3. Not quite. <laughs> he plays h3. Okay. And that stops the knighty from coming in even more. All right. Well, not actually. Not quite. But okay. So, so now he stopped that, that threat. So now he plays his bishop back to c7. He doesn't want to get, get attacked, I guess. All right. And maybe he's making his way in for the queen there. All right, so b3, g5. All right, so he's threatening to play pawn here. Because if, um, if he just ignores it and plays g5, then he can force, even though he's sacrificing a knight here, do you see how he's forcing a draw here? Check, just, and you do this three times and they just call it. They don't make you do it on and on and on and on. And then it's a draw. And considering Matt Larson is a national master, um, I don't think he'd be too, uh, too ashamed if he just drew a Grandmaster K and Trove. All right, so that's what the threat is. So white counters with, by taking the pawn here. And now Matt kind of, Forgoes his plan and plays knight takes. Interesting. All right. Maybe he didn't even want to draw. Maybe he wants to get his queen to d6 and checkmate him. So, so knight takes, pawn takes, and so good. All right. If you've been following my lectures here, if uh, your king is in a castle and his king is in the center. You want to break open the center at all cost, okay? So he does that by e4. So takes, bishop takes, so now the center is open, okay? So now black plays knight f6, attacking the knight, all right? And, and now his queen is free to go to d6. And now white plays rook to e1. So notice. No, you should notice that the E file is now the action file, because that's where all the action is, okay? So, rook, bishop, king. I move the bishop, check, right? 
I mean, how hard is this? All right. So as black, should you be scared of this? Oh, man, if he moves the bishop anywhere, I'm in check. You want to just let this happen? You don't want to get discovered check, do you? No. No, no. Heck no. So what should you do? Move the king. Move the king. Where do you suggest the king move? Yeah. Take a castle short. Okay. That's what I would have played. Because how good is your kingside attack anyway? But instead, Matt Larson takes a gamble. He's like, well, I plan a grandmaster, you know, I'm mathematically eliminated from winning the, the junior championship anyway. I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> Queen to d6. Threatening not checkmate, by the way. <laughs> OK. If he was threatening checkmate, it'd be something. So, so now, Kane's like, all right, awesome. I probably would have thought of this move for about two seconds at the most, and then I would have just played it. Where do you think white plays in this position? Bishop takes C6. <laughs> yeah, bishop takes c6. Not just one check, double check, all right? You got two checks going. So he can't legally take this because the king would still be in check. Whenever you're in double check, there's only one way to get out of double check. You have to move the king. You can't block two checks at once, and you can't capture two pieces. OK. so. He's got to move his king, king to f8, OK? All right, so now, hey, I might as well take another pawn. Why not? OK, so now I'm up two pawns. All right, so now Matt Larson gets his, gets his check. King here. Why not, why not check him again? Oh, OK, well, because it does nothing, and you lose your rook. OK, so <laughs> see, if you check him again here, it's a bad move. Because king here, and now I'm threatening to take your queen, and I'm also threatening bishop takes rook. Make sense? OK, so, so I'm going to move my rook to d8 first. OK? And then I'll play check. All right, so, so Kane's like, OK. So bishop goes to b6. Queen to f3, protecting the bishop and adding another attacker to this knight. So bishop attacks the rook. Bishop retreats. He's like, you want to trade? We'll trade. So he's calling his bluff. <laughs> he's calling his bluff. So, so OK, so now Matt Larson plays the check. OK, because guess what? Yeah, I'm, your queen's attacked, OK? So check, so king to e2, rook check, king moves, rook takes, rook takes. Does the queen have anywhere to go? The e1, the e1 yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we don't want to trade a queen for a rook. So what else? So. The, uh, yeah. So his queen is now trapped. It's on this back row, and nothing, nothing good is happening. He could try this. Rook takes. Pawn takes. Queen takes. Bishop takes. But that would still leave him down a whole rook. So not very good. Okay. So so Matt Larson. Unfortunately, got his queen. Queen trapped down there. Uh, he cut off his, his escape diagonal. See, he had this whole diagonal, so he thought he was doing pretty nice. But by playing bishop there, yeah. blocks it in, and then uh, not good. So we'll see a game uh, kind of similar to that, uh, how we trap the queen, OK? We're ready for a game two. This is a game I played as black against um, a guy rated around a thousand, okay? And of course, I win by trapping his queen, okay? So e4, c5. So this is the uh, Sicilian defense. I play it um, kind of weird. I play d6. I usually play knight to c6, but I decided to play d6. 
it's all it's all good night to see three so you're like oh Mike you're really bad why 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 are you trapping in your bishop all right so I had no intention of getting my bishop out on this diagonal so how do you think I do I fianchetto it with g6 okay all right g6 so he plays g3 which is kind of unusual. He has the express lane out to a check or to c4, and he decides to play g3, okay? So very unusual. It's bishop to g7, it's bishop g2, bishop g4, pins the knight, he plays d3, and now queen to d7. I'm putting the queen and the bishop when they're on the same file, it's called a diagonal, or not, <laughs> added that, all right, when, when, when the queen and bishop are on the same diagonal, it's called a battery, all right, so that's a battery for you, okay, it's a battery, all right, so uh, white castles, and the, the good thing about this battery is uh, you can play bishop down there, and then you can trade uh, the bishops, which is what, what I play, okay, because once you get this guy out of there, it'll be way easier to uh, checkmate your opponent. All right, so he plays knight to h4, which is kind of an unusual move here. So knight to c6. He gets his bishop out, but it's not doing too much. So now I want to get castled, so I play knight f6. And now I'm thinking when he plays knight to h4, He's going to play, play f4 and then f5, okay? But instead, he plays queen to f3. Okay. So I'm like, that's kind of unusual. All right. So how do you think I take advantage of him playing the dubious queen to f3? All right, so one suggestion is g5. Attacks the knight. And I take your bishop. And I'm attacking your queen. And if you play here, I'll just take, knight takes, and I'm, then I'm up a pawn. Okay. So, so remember, the uh, the name of the lesson is don't lose your queen. So, bishop to g4 is that what you're saying? Okay, bishop to g4. Okay. So now the queen's under attack, and he can't retreat through the diagonal. All right, so there's only one square that doesn't lose right away for him, and it's f4. Now, does anybody have any ideas? See how the queen doesn't have many legal squares to go to? Well, that doesn't just outright lose them. So does anybody have any ideas now to, to corral this queen? Which one? Knight to h5. Knight to h5. And then um, the queen would have to go here. And then what would we do? Anybody got any ideas? Or are you just like, wow, man, you, you escaped. You're good. And maybe you did escape. I don't know. It's going to be close now. F6, uh, don't, so, uh, <laughs> that's a bad word in this class. All right, but he said F6, so we have to go, go with it. F6, uh, 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 you better hope, you better hope this works. So this, this looks like a good square for my queen. And I'm feeling pretty good right now. I'm feeling so good. But, all right, but I shouldn't feel good because you got bishop to e6 and you finally got him. You finally got him. 
queen can't retreat through the diagonal. So you see how it's cool. So it looks like in these last uh, two, two games that bishops are really cool at trying to win uh, queens because they, they take away a lot of their flight squares, okay? All right, so in the game, I did not play knight here. I just went for the straightforward e5. And now he plays a, a humorous move. What, what do you think white would play in this position, if you had to guess? Queen to g5. Yeah, queen to g5. It's that he decides <laughs> to go straight for it. And just, just let his queen get hung. Okay, I, I almost played a really funny move and not even took it and played castle. Because if he goes back, I play h6. But then I was like, well, you know, if he's just going to give me a queen, why not? I'll just, I'll just take it. I, even I guess, guess my better judgment, but however. So now he takes it, and now he's got the big threat, bishop to g7, okay? And now I can't castle. So maybe I should have castled when I had the chance. But, um, but my opponent plays even funnier than that. Okay, so after I take, he decides not to take back, which kind of surprised me. He plays knight to d5. Okay, so he's hoping that I play something, and then he plays knight takes check, forking my, my queen and my king, and gets my... Um, Okay, so, so obviously I could just take his knight, but then he would take, and now he's attacking my knight. So he just lost a full queen, and he thought he was being cute with this intermezzo move. So instead of being down a queen for a bishop, he's just down a queen right now. So if I can just keep that, I'll be up a full queen for nothing. So what... Uh, what move, <laughs> what move should I play to just uh, keep all my advantage? And by the way, my opponent is, is a guy, he's, he's been in the audience a few times in uh, Grandmaster Ben Feingold's lectures that's always uh, raising his hand and shouting out the wrong answer. So, so, <laughs> so. You guys should like it that I'm crushing this kid. All right. <laughs> so what, uh, what move should I make? I don't want to lose my bishop. I don't want to lose my knight, obviously. So what move should I make here? That way I'm just up a whole queen for nothing. I don't have to give back any of my material. Do you, do you have it? Oh, I don't know. Oh, OK, OK. Bomber. <laughs> How about you? Uh, it can't be a pawn move because he's got a serious threat right now. Knight takes knight check, and then knight takes queen. All right, so, so basically there's two things we want to do, right? We could eliminate the knight, but unfortunately that doesn't get our piece back. Knight to g8. Knight to, knight to g8, okay. Knight to g8's funny. But it loses because I'll just take. Do you want to take back? No. No, because then he then he gets the fork. Okay. I'll castle. A castle. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, because that castle doesn't work either. No, that castle know. just leads to a disaster. So you see how fast you can go from being plus nine to. To negative five, probably. All right, so if we castle on the other side, he'll still just take our knight. You're making me look like a genius here with my, my move, okay? H5 isn't even legal. <laughs> All right, so, so let's see what's going on in this position, okay? So, so obviously at home, since... Since 
I, I would just say, hey, all right, just, just eliminate the threat and, and just be up a queen for a knight then, OK? But, but we can find this. I, I, I know we can find this. So white's threats are knight takes knight check and take the queen, right? And they're also bishop takes bishop, right? All right. So, well, if I give you this hint, you can't miss it. Bishop to G7. Right. All right. So bishop to g7 is the move. The hint is move the bishop out of danger and protect your knight. Boom. All right, see how that's much better than taking the knight, than castling, especially castling short. And, um, and now all he can take is your knight, and we can take it right back. And so we're up a whole queen for absolutely nothing. So this should be a very, very easy game. All right. So, so now he plays uh, bishop h6. <laughs> so, <laughs> so do you think we should take it? No. no. It's a trick. All right, so if we take it, then he gets our knight and then our queen, okay? So now what move should we play? Castle, castle good. Long castle? No. Short castle. Excellent. Well, short castle. So now so now we're, we're in a great, great shape. So knight takes f6 check, bishop takes. So he gets our rook, but we're up so much material, it really doesn't matter. So rook takes f8, h3, attacks our bishop. So what should we do? Take Just take the pawn. We count up. He's got one defender, we got two attackers. So we can just take it. So he takes. Queen takes. And now we should be thinking about checkmate. He plays a really good move here. So if you had two free moves, I'm going to give black two free moves here. How would you checkmate uh, white here? If it was black to move and he has two free moves. Adjourn. Excellent. You don't like knight to e2? <laughs> well, actually, it, do, it does make a big difference. Knight f3 doesn't work, because knight takes knight, huh? So knight to e2. All right. So, so you saw how black has a checkmate in two moves. So white has been making a lot of uh, speculative moves, to say the least. But he makes a really good move in this position, because he doesn't want to get checkmated in two moves. What, do you, what move do you think he makes? C3, excellent, okay. So see your opponent's threats and react to them. All right, but, but I, it's fine. Queen takes. And now, I could just take this pawn, huh? But I want to take it with check. How in the world can I take this pawn with check? Anybody have any ideas? Yeah, oh, uh, Steven's guy. Oh, Steven's like, oh yeah, easy. <laughs> so, so check, king takes, check, king takes. Okay. See, if you can just take something with check, then it's fun. Okay. But, um, but I decide not to take it. I think I have better. I have f5. So who do you think I really want to take that pawn with? Because if I take it with the queen, it's not checkmate, right? Yeah, if I can somehow take that with the rook, I'll be aces, all right? So he plays h5, so he's not letting me do that. So queen takes h5, check. King to g1. So pawn takes e4. Pawn takes e4. And let's see if you guys can, can figure this one out. What do you think black plays in this position? Yes. Rook to e, I mean F3. All right, rook to F3. I was thinking about ideas like this. But unfortunately, then he can move his other rook. Let's say he goes all the way to B1, whatever. And then it's going to be really tough for me to checkmate him, OK? Because guess what? 
he can go to F1 and then he can get out. So I don't want him to get out, okay? I do not want him getting his king to F1, ever, ever. So what move do you think I should play? Queen to H3. Queen to H3. Wait, 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 what are some other suggestions? Queen to E2. Queen to E2. <laughs> okay, so if I play Queen to E2, he's like, okay, whatever. And how am I going to checkmate him then if my queen's on E2? Prevents him from prevents queen, prevents the king from moving. Right, but, but it doesn't prevent my rook from going there though. And then you go back, and then guess where his king goes? Oh, shucks. What's up? Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so he had a really funny uh, suggestion. Our producer, uh, Ben Simon, had, had a good move here. If, I, if he goes queen to e2 and I goes there, I'm going to take check and just, uh, just win. Win a lot. Okay, so that's pretty good. So queen to e2... Is okay, but maybe I'll put my other. Uh, maybe I'll just ignore you and play a4. And then what? Okay, okay. So Stevens got it. So play queen to g4 right now, and then he's got to go. Well, h1 or h2, and now, now, what? What's your move? Rook to f3. F3. Perfect. Okay. Rook G1, and how can we put on the final touches? Rook H3, checkmate. Excellent, okay? All right, fantastic. So, so you saw how, how in the game he lost his queen here? So the way he lost his queen was very, very early on in the game, he played his queen to F3. And it kind of boxed him in. He only has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven legal moves with his queen. And of those seven, only one, two, three of them are, are any good, okay? The rest of them, he'll get taken, okay? So, so we attack, and luckily we attack not as not just his queen, but also his flight squares, okay, where he could get away. And so now he's got go here, and then we got him, okay. Before that, could you play uh, the edge, G pawn up to threaten the bishop and take away the skipper? In this position? You push the pawn to attack his knight. Oh, we went through that. That one was. The reason why it didn't go there, as Peter knows, because bishop takes bishop, and now I'm threatening your queen. But it was a decent idea. But it, it, it's better just to attack right away. We have time for one more game. Anybody want to see one more game? Yeah. All right. Let's see it. And this one's really easy, OK? It's laughable how easy it is, OK? But I'm playing a rank amateur in this game. And um, I have the, uh, the black pieces, e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6. All right, bishop to d3. Not the most best place for this bishop, huh? It, uh, it's basically acting like a pawn and stopping this pawn from advancing. Much better are c4 or even b5. All right, not d3 though, d6. Now he decides, since he can't get his bishop out this way, to play b3, okay? So you see how one mistake, it just compounds and compounds and compounds. And now, because you made a mistake of not getting your d-pawn to d4 and your bishop out, you have to make other adjustments in the game. And this is not the best place for your bishop here. All right, knight f6, bishop to b2. No, actually, first he plays, um, he castles, okay? 
All right, so bishop to g4. So it pins the knight here, okay? So knight to c3, g6, bishop to b2. So bishop to g7. So we got our bishops all on this uh, long diagonal, so there could be uh, potential tactics coming up. All right, so he plays the move e5. All right, he only has one defender on this, and I have two attackers. So knight takes e5, and this is a way people end up losing their queens too. Knight takes e5. What should black play here? Move the bishop. <laughs> Move the bishop. Yeah, you're right. Move the bishop. <laughs> so, zero by c, the move we should play. So sometimes this is, uh, I know you got it. Yeah, just take, sometimes they forget a piece is in a pin, and then it all falls apart. So always look what's in the same line as, you know, your king and your power pieces, like your queen and the rook, and make sure, oh man, my knight's in a pin, I better not move it, all right? So rook takes d1, pawn takes e5, and uh, it just gets pretty bad from here. Bishop check, knight to d7, rook to d1. And see how hard it is to play when you're down a queen, even if, even if you have a piece for it. Castle, knight to d5, attack the bishop. We love trades when we're up material. We love them, okay? Knight to b6, even though we get forked. So that's the second time I got up a queen, and then I give it all back <laughs> because I give back an exchange. I did it in the first game. I did it in the second game. When you're up, it doesn't mean it's time to relax, okay, because you're still playing a game, okay? Um, just ask, uh, ask anybody. It's tough. It's tough. All right. So knight to b6, but we're still doing okay. Knight takes a8. Queen takes c2, bishop takes e5, bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes a8, rook takes e7, rook to d8. And, um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty much, uh, it's pretty much a, a done deal here. I mean, it's not going to last uh, too much longer. What should a uh, black play in this position? Just to try to try to get it get it over with. Rook to d1. Okay. And does he have any good defense to this, or is it pretty much game set match? Could check, right? Did that do anything? No. no. <laughs> That's a spite check. But yeah, there's no way, there's no good way to get out of here. So you have to lose this rook, because if rook takes, queen takes checkmate. And um, so g3 is much better than h3 in that position. <laughs> but it's too late. He already played h3. He took his hand <laughs> off. <laughs> so, so yeah, in this position, the correct move is g3. Excellent job. See, you're learning. You're learning. All right. Thank you all for coming to another edition of uh, Beginner Breakdown. Try not to lose your queen. All right.